as defenders of the faith, we must be honest with God where we're at on our pilgrimage in the faith. As defenders of the faith, we've got to be honest with other people about where we're at in our faith work walk. There will be times when you are not sure about what God's word says, but you need to be honest with God. You need to say, God, I know that I should have more faith than this, but I just don't seem to have it yet. If you've ever walked down that street or driven down that road, then certainly you understand the dilemma of the man in our text. You read it when you get home. It's a very interesting story that's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. This man has a son that is extremely sick, overtaken by a demonic spirit and dealing with all type of adversities. He comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, if you can heal my son, we would be so pleased. Jesus says, if thou canst believe, then all things are possible to him that believeth. This man simply says, Lord, I believe, but help now my unbelief. That's one of the most honest emotions in the Bible that you'll ever find. He says, I want to believe, I do believe, but there are areas in my life where I'm just not sure. Have you ever been there when you thought the Lord said something or you thought scripture or you believe that scripture meant this and it just didn't unfold the way you thought it would unfold? If you've ever been there, then you need to understand that there are certain things that God is teaching us in times that he's trying to stretch our faith. We must be honest about where we are emotionally in our situation. We must be honest about where we are spiritually. Lord, I believe, but there's some areas that I'm just not sure. Then we must be honest about where we are mentally. This text teaches us a few things. First of all, it teaches us that the facilitating of our faith does not come without frustration. When God gets ready to stretch you, it will be frustrating. But number two, the presence of faith does not mean the absence of doubt. There will be some times when you have to question God and say, Lord, did I hear you right? I'm just not sure that, that when you have faith, it does not mean that doubt is not somewhere around the neighborhood. But number three, and this is most important, lean close. Jesus does not dismiss us by the quantity of our faith, but he delivers us by the quality of our faith. I'm in the text. The man says, it's not that I don't have any faith. He says, I do believe. Help now my unbelief. Isn't that good news? To know that Jesus does not dismiss, dismiss us because of the quantity or the size of our faith, but he delivers us by the quality of our faith in him. Here's the question. How do you handle life when you need God to develop your faith? I have four things to tell you, and then we're done. Number one, you've got to tell it to Jesus. That's what this man does in the text. He says, Jesus, I believe, but help the areas in my life where I don't believe. Then number two, after you tell it to Jesus, you've got to rely on the word of God. You've got to trust in his word. I've heard people say, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Let me rearrange that. God said it, and that settles it, whether you believe it or not. You've got to trust in his word. Then number three, take one step at a time. Faith does not grow just humongously overnight. I know that's not a word, but I like to make up words. It takes time. Once you come to Christ, the Bible says that, behold, any man that's in Christ, old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. That become is the operative word. It's a process. Take one step at a time. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that faith means taking the step even when you don't see the staircase. So one step at a time, but just make sure that the step that you're taking is a forward step and not a backward step. Finally, when you want your faith to be stretched, let me recap. You have to tell it to Jesus. Trust in his word. Take one step at a time. Here it is. Let the chips fall where they may. That old idiom comes from an expression of woodcutters uh, that were artisans, that were building something. And as they chopped away to create their product, 
they weren't worried about the chips that fall on the wayside. They concentrated on the finished product. Romans 8 and 28 says that we know and we know that all things are working together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Let the chips fall their way. We serve a God that's able to stretch our faith and the stretching of our faith is not always with the absence of doubt. God bless you. God keep you. Keep your hands in the hands of Jesus. He'll strengthen your faith.